call it morbid curiosity, call it intrigue. I don't know what it is, but a question that I've been getting a lot lately, maybe because people know that we just had our fourth baby, I'm getting asked what my schedule looks like throughout the course of a week, which I kind of laugh at when I think of schedule because there are so many curveballs that gets tossed you know, my way, maybe your way in life, running business with kids that sometimes a schedule, there has to be a lot of room for variability. And it kind of dawned on me as I was receiving this question in my inbox that this is something that I've pretty intentionally fine-tuned over the years and it adjusts according to seasons. And I think that I can probably help a lot of people skip many years of mistakes that I most certainly made time that I lost, money I lost. And I'm going to share my current schedule uh, and how we work in homeschooling and family time and business. Like this is the this is the sole income generator for our family and it has been for a very long time. So I want to share that. But I also want to share a lot of the pitfalls that we seek to avoid. My new routine that's been absolutely amazing. I'm going to share with you my leader's morning checklist. This has been a time saver. This has been an energy booster and take it from someone who's struggled with energy and health struggles over the years and really what I'm working on and focusing on in my continued growth. So buckle up because you're about to enter into the circus, which is my life, and I am going to share with you my schedule. Hey, you're listening to the Luminary Leadership Podcast, and I'm your host, Liz. This is the space where we equip overwhelmed entrepreneurs to become the confident, visionary leader their business, team, family, legacy need to win. After working with countless entrepreneurs over the last decade plus, I've noticed this theme. No matter the level of success they achieved, and I've worked with some incredibly successful business owners, they get to this point where they're asking, now what? You know, what am I being called to next? What does next look like? How do I get there? If you're listening to this, you get it you're craving more impact and you want to feel less frantic and in the weeds of your day-to-day roles and instead lead with that vision and that peace and that intention and that clarity. You want to wake up each morning with that clarity and vision and the time and the margin to do what you love in your business and in your life with your family. This show is where industry leaders come to grow into their next level of achievement and purpose and impact and legacy success in business and true legacy at home. Get ready because we both know you don't just need another strategy. It is time for your breakthrough. Welcome back to the Luminary Leadership Podcast. First tip, You have to find your own groove when it comes to a schedule. Anything I share here today, you've got to put through your own filter. Your life is different than mine, both in circumstance and in your goals, your vision for your future. So sometimes I think people make the mistake of hearing that someone else is successful and that person's going to share their schedule and then they're going to take that schedule and they're going to carbon copy it into their calendar and think that they're going to find the same levels of success. A schedule is just a schedule. It's your mindset around it. It's your perspective in life. It's your flexibility and your resilience as you pursue things, whether it be in your business or your personal life. And it's how you adjust intentionally to the seasons that are upcoming in your life. At the time of this recording, I am a breastfeeding mom to a four-month-old. It's our fourth baby. I have three other kids that were homeschooling. We run two businesses. We are all home together, my husband included. We live on a farm property and that requires some of our attention. We're in a season of intentional growth in our company. We're hosting some events with some high level entrepreneurs. So like what we have going on might be really different than what you have going on. So again, take what I'm sharing and then build in some time, find some margin in your calendar to sit down and say, how am I gonna make, how am I gonna make this my own and test it, adjust, and then re-implement as I figure out what works for me. I've also been in plenty of seasons where we're intentionally uh, maintaining right? We're not in a season of exponential growth. We're in a season of maintaining because that's what we want in that particular time in our lives. You know, when I was having the baby or coming into a postpartum period, I specifically didn't want to be in a hard charging season from a business perspective. I wanted to be more in that visionary leadership perspective than family mode 
you know, at home and more present and relaxing and resting my body and being ready for that. So you have to pick and choose what's right for you at different times and being really intentional around that too. You also might have kids in school, which could be a great benefit to you where you have a specific chunk of the day where you are home without children. Or maybe your kids are grown up, right? Or maybe your spouse works at home with you, or maybe they're out of the house. Maybe you're a single parent. So like, you just have to take it, put it through your filter, and that's my whole point. So like with anything that anyone shares with you, it is not law. It's value, right? And you sculpt that value to fit your needs and that stage of your life. And when you have young kids, schedules are rarely set in stone. So I even adjust when it's working for me. I still have to make adjustments as we enter into new seasons or just chaos of that week. And schedules should also honor both the vision, where you're going, and the goals necessary to reach that vision, the reality of your day-to-day, right? Like the granular. So that's step one. Do you know where you're actually trying to go? You have to have a clear vision, be able to cast that vision and go forward. If you are struggling with this, this is a major struggle for a lot of people. So before I can even get into the scheduling piece, I am going to say, if you are battling where to focus your energy, if you're struggling with clarity of vision, I have a free tool that I want to pass along to you. This is what I come back to time and time again. And this will dictate what the schedule becomes for you. So go to luminaryleadershipco.com forward slash focused, past tense, focused. I'll link it below as well. And in the show notes, if you're listening to this podcast, if you're watching, we'll put it in the description. Go stag that and actually do it. I don't know if you realize this, but sometimes when people offer you a free tool, it doesn't work through osmosis. You actually have to leverage it. And then it will allow you to build the most kick-ass schedule you could ever imagine, but you need it to align with your vision. There's no four-hour work week, miracle morning. Like there's nothing you can apply to a life without vision that's gonna even make sense for you or work for you. So the first piece of the puzzle for me has been the idea of this leader's morning checklist. And I wanna walk you through that because it's been so instrumental for my growth, for my scheduling and understanding where to put my time and energy. This leader's morning checklist is something I brought to my clients. I've helped them craft their own version of this. And this is something when I started implementing it. Now, granted, again, it looks different in different seasons, but generally speaking, it has these major buckets. And we have studied this, we have tested it, we have put it into practice, and it has proven to move the needle both in profit and growth and progress in business, but also joy in the process and alignment with values as you go and just a sustainable business and life model. And the first piece of that puzzle in the leader's morning checklist is protect, okay? So we got to protect. What does that mean? There has to be a period of time before you get into the reactionary nature of a busy, crazy entrepreneurial day where you are protecting your time. Now, this might mean for you as a parent, if you're a parent, you are getting up at the butt crack of dawn because your kids get up really early and you need to protect this limited period of time where you get your mind right, where you are protecting both yourself from the chaos of what can ensue in the morning with little kids, but also the chaos, more importantly, of what's going to hit you once you open up your phone, once you open up your laptop. And this ideally is a two-hour period. Now, before you completely balk at the idea of a two-hour period, there's a lot that comes into this two hours. This isn't two hours of you sitting zen, meditating on your back porch with a cup of coffee. This is protected time from external factors that are going to take you off path from how to best leverage the schedule that's ahead of you that day. So what is not happening in this two-hour time, this is what you are eliminating from this two-hour period, is social media, is email, is team check-ins going on Slack, is getting into your to-do list. This isn't a reactionary period. This is a, an intentional period of time. Now, I will say, if you are a parent of young kids like me, other things might come into that time. You don't have to protect against your family. I'm not a bro marketer telling you to like ignore your children because mama's got to get the work done and she's got to have this time and don't bother me and the door's locked. No, I'm not telling you that because I don't think that's incongruence with your values. What I am saying is you're eliminating the other crap that's keeping you from being intentional and strategic with the rest of your day. Now, 
what I try to do is there are elements of that protect period where I do try to carve out time completely alone. I tap in my husband and I say, hey, I'm going to need these next 15 minutes because this is something I can't really do with a kid and tell. Other times, some of my kids are older, I'm bringing them into the fray for what's happening during these two hours as well. So let me talk about, we talk about what is eliminated, what you're protecting against. Let me talk about what falls in this ideally two-hour block. Let me also say, there are times where I'm traveling, there are times where I'm sick, there are times when the kid is sick, there are times where I'm in a crazy season with, with business. This two-hour period might be condensed down to a half an hour, but it's still intentional, it's still leveraged. Also in that schedule, so for me, that schedule, the time block is six to eight, typically. Sometimes a baby gets me up way earlier and it's five to seven, right? Okay, so it, it can adjust and it can move. But my first thing I'm doing is it's, all about getting my head in the right space. Now, this sounds trivial because it's way overstated, but do you practice it? And for me, it's prayer. Because when I can start my day in quiet, this doesn't have to be a long amount of time, and I pray prayers of gratitude and possibility, and I ask God to help me step into the leader I need to be to carry out whatever that day is going to throw at me, I feel equipped. I feel readied. I feel prepared for what might happen and what might come. I also feel calm. I feel steady. I feel grateful. And even when I'm stepping into a day where I know I'm going to just get slammed at work, I know I'm going to be facing big challenges or navigating something, a setback or something that we didn't see coming. I know I'm coming and navigating it from the space of, wow, how blessed am I that I get to do this? How honored am I that I've been chosen to do this incredible work. I'm going to show up for it the best I can. And I've prayed for the wisdom of how to approach these things. I've prayed for the guidance of how to navigate these setbacks that we're facing or how to navigate these seasons that we're in. I've prayed for the words to speak over my clients or my family or the people around me. So I'm stepping into that prayer. And for you, it might be more of a meditation. It might be just really thinking through what that might look like and just be in that calm place. Anytime I feel myself completely out of alignment, before I allow myself to spiral, and this is why I'm not getting directly into the scheduled part, the actual, I do this at 8 a.m., blah, 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 because I want you to understand the power of what it means to be a leader and how a leader thinks, especially in the start of their day. Because how you start something is probably going to be a good indicator of how you run that race throughout the day and then how you finish. So whenever I feel myself feeling that stress or that anxiety, that's when I really lean into this even harder. And if I'm having a day where I'm particularly out of whack, where I don't have a good mindset, where I'm really struggling with something emotionally or mentally, I lean on tools to help me get into this mindset. Maybe it's taking out my Bible or a book that is walking me through some guided meditation or something that's going to help me reframe my thinking and get into that place of of gratitude and get me in alignment with the character traits that I want to embody as I navigate that day. Okay, so that's one piece. And it's first thing. For me, it's before my feet hit the floor because I can still be half asleep, super groggy, and waking myself in that mode of gratitude. The next piece, now I have these things written in, now make sure you don't make the mistake I made once. I wrote these on my mirror years ago in Sharpie because I thought the Sharpie was a dry erase marker and it indeed was not. Uh, Now I write it in dry erase because that's the logical thing to do in your mirror, but in my bathroom, I just have a little checklist of this leader's morning checklist. Now for you, I will drop it so that you can just download it and have it. You can laminate it if you're old school. My mom, I swear she laminated everything and it totally worked. You can laminate, you can print it, you can put it as a background on your phone, just as this reminder of these things. But I have this up in my mirror. The next step is getting into visualization. There is a reason that Olympians put as much energy and focus and credit the visualization tactics that they have in terms of crossing the finish line or their speed or agility or whatever it might be in visualization as the power of actual physical practice has. There's a reason that they put energy and time into it. So I take five minutes, five minutes of those two hours to imagine the day ahead. I think about 
the person I need to be to show up best for that day. And because I'm, I'll share how I do this, but the Friday before the upcoming week, for the most part, minus curveballs, I know what's going to be happening over the course of that week. So I already know what I need to be as a leader or who I need to be as a leader to approach that day. Like I might have a full day of filming where I'm filming for seven straight hours. It's physically depleting. It's not my favorite thing to do. I'm tired. I know from a visualization perspective who I need to picture myself being to deliver as best as humanly possible with a day like that. I might have an entire day where I have client calls or sales calls or things that I need to show up and be extroverted when in, my, in reality, I'm pretty introverted and that sucks my energy. So I can envision that. I can envision smiling as I'm speaking on those calls and being energized with the people that I'm speaking to. And I'm thinking again about those character traits, those leadership traits that I need to embody. And I breathe through this exercise. I've really taken the time. This is not something to quickly check off your list. And this is a mistake people make. They will try and do this visualization process and they're just, they like real quick close their eyes and they picture it and they're like, okay, okay, now I pictured it, I'm good. No, this is feeling it. Picture it so much that you start to feel it. Get your brain start, get your brain to start to get your body to react to what you're thinking and picturing. And then in my planner, I'm a pen to paper girl. I write out three I am statements. They're kind of similar to how in my planner, I'm writing out my, not my big three. I call them my mission critical three. The three things I have to focus on that day in order to move the needle in the business. I also want to think about the three things I have to be that day to carry out those three mission critical things because that's a part of what I'm visualizing. Then I get into the optimized portion of my two hours. So first thing upon waking, I'm really into all the biohacking things and that's not what this episode's about. So I'm going to give you the raw basics. If you're new to the game, you need to give yourself an internal bath when you wake up in the morning. You just went through multiple hours of sleep. Your body has dehydrated. Wake yourself up with 20 ounces of quality water upon waking. Quality water means not tap water, likely not water out of a plastic bottle. You know, you gotta be drinking the stuff that is going to actually lend to hydration. I add lemon water for extra lip, liver detoxification. It kind of wakes me up too and boosts the metabolism and your energy a little bit more naturally because I am caffeine free. And then I actually add high quality salt to that water for the opportunity to boost my electrolytes and my minerals that have been depleted overnight. You also want to get your lymphatic system moving and commit to doing that daily during this protected time block, during this one to two hour block. And some options, I'm not talking going for a run. I'm not talking about um, heavy lifting or HIIT training. You figure out what the right movement for your body is, but lymphatic system, so your heart naturally pumps, whether you think about it or not. Your lymphatic system requires movement in order to be pumping and to get things moving in your body. And that's why we're, so many of us are so sick. We're so stagnant. We sit down all day. We don't have the pounding of our feet on the ground to get our lymphatic system naturally draining. So you can jump on a trampoline or a mini trampoline for like a couple minutes and that gets your body draining. If you don't have a mini trampoline, you can literally, if you're watching this, I'll kind of show you with my hands. If you're, this is your foot, right? You can go up on your toes and just smack your heels down hard enough that there's a pound in your body that gets your lymph nodes and your lymphatic system draining if you don't have a trampoline. Come down firmly, do that for 30 to 50 reps. You can dry brush from your feet upward, your hands inward, up your arms and torso and work towards your lymph nodes. This is all going to get your lymphatic system right. And why are we doing this in this two-hour block? Why are we doing this? Why are we even talking about this in an episode that's about scheduling? Because this is going to optimize the time that you do spend. I work half the amount of time that I used to work. And I am considerably more productive on profit-boosting activities because I take this intentional time in the morning get my body and mind right. I want to optimize myself so that when I'm working, I am most effective. I don't have to sit there and stare at the computer till I go cross-eyed because I'm exhausted and I'm trying to grind through it and I chunk that caffeine to get to the other side of it. I want to be optimized 
and moving in the best possible way so that I can get as much done from a place of clarity and focus and leadership. So then I take 10 to 20 minutes for deep, slow stretching. So why do I choose that over HIIT training? Right now, I am in a stage of my healing journey with my health and my adrenals and Lyme disease where really intense workout depletes me. It actually leads to inflammation in my body. But when I take 10 to 20 minutes of slow stretching and deep breathing, this is a time to con- I can do, I can have it stack. If you want to condense how much time you're spending, you can do your visualization while you do this. You can do your prayer while you do this, or you can do your mental prepping for the day. I want to think through my schedule. So I'll pull up my, this is where I have it stack. I do the visualization separately, the prayer separately, but I have it stack when I'm doing the stretching. I have my planner in front of me and I'm seeing each individual thing that I'm working on, whether it's a time block for recording and I'm thinking about those recordings that I'm putting out that day and I'm thinking about the things I want to include in it and some ideas and I'm letting those creative juices flow or I'm looking at the meetings that I have scheduled and I'm thinking about conversations we're going to be having and the negotiations I might be having. So I'm using those 10, maybe 15, 20 minutes to have it stack so that I'm not stretching and then going into planning for the day. This is something I can do dual at the same time. And then at least 30 minutes post hydration. So you don't dilute your digestive enzymes too close to eating. You want to fuel your body with clean, high protein, high healthy fat for optimal focus and energy. I go way low carb in the morning. I go high fat, high protein so that I'm not hungry and I'm focused and my brain feels really good. And then for me, I live in Wisconsin. So this can vary different times of the year, but when it's not a frozen tundra, I get outside and I walk barefoot in the grass for at least five minutes. I am not a tree hugger, okay? You might think that's weird. I'm here to tell you this allows your body from a scientific perspective, this can be measured in uh, electric current. When you ground your feet to the earth, there's a scientific outcome that that can be measured that increases your heart rate variability. It reduces inflammation in the body. It increases your energy naturally, your focus naturally, and helps create this steady calm in you so you're ready to take on the day. Okay, so we have prayed, we've visualized, we've we've optimized our body. And this is all before we've even started our day. This is all before I've even revealed my schedule. So we're going to get into the specific step-by-step parts of my day, the hours that I do certain things within my business. But now we're going to get into innovation. So this to me is what sets overwhelmed entrepreneurs, hustlers, right? Like the getting your grind set and keep going kind of entrepreneurs that are going to stay stuck there on that hamster wheel forever from innovative, influential, top dog leaders. And it's this idea of innovation and protected in my morning before I ever touch my work, before I sit down to write, before I sit down to record, before I open up Slack and touch base with my team, before I ever even consider going into social media. I am thinking, I am a leader who innovates and I have protected time in my morning when my brain is now awake, my body is optimized, I'm starting to get creative and I sit down and I think about, I build in at least 20 minutes, if not more, I create margin to be an actual leader and to be in contemplation, to think. This might sound like a waste of time to you, I am here to tell you that for as long as you adopt that mindset, that this you don't have time for this, you will not get to the heights of possibility that you are seeking. When you look at and you study leaders who have blown the top off of success, the ones that you look at and you're like, oh my gosh, I couldn't touch that with a 10-mile pole. You could if you started to adopt the leadership strategies that they've adopted and put into practice day after day after day. And one of those things is margin to think, to be creative, to imagine, and to innovate. So this is where I'm capturing stories or lessons or wisdom or new concepts that I want to write on that week or that day. I'm coming up with my own ideas. I'm creating new new ideas for whether it be offers or or talks that I'm going to give or things that I'm going to put into my writing uh, or bring to the podcast or whatever it might be. And this is where I'm sitting and I actually have a system. I use Google Docs, super simple. And I have places where I'm innovating on specific things and I file these ideas. So I'm not just like brain dumping into a document 
I'm not just putting things into my phone. I know how to categorize them so that I can pull them later when I want to create podcast content, when I want to create a video content or a new course or a new thing that I'm creating for my clients or a new speech that I'm going to give. And one easy way to do that is utilizing something like Google Docs. You can create a table of content so you can easily file based on the topic, just have a keyword. It gets filed under leadership, family, right? Legacy, business, marketing strategy, whatever, you know, your category of focus might be. But this innovation block is probably the most critical for this time block that I'm talking about. And this for me does not fall in my standard workday. This falls in the protected time, the protected time. And even if you can only build in 10 to 20 minutes of this, imagine if you had 10 to 20 minutes, five days a week that were not dedicated to to do's, scrolling the internet, responding to emails or responding to a team that was strictly dedicated to creating a new, to innovating and letting new ideas bubble up and marinate and uh, thinking about what's coming next. And you were staying in that vision, that future thinking mode that a leader stays in. What would that do for your progress? If you are feeling stagnant, if you are feeling stuck, if you are wondering why you're not leaping ahead in business and in the categories of growth that you want to step into, this is likely a deficit for you. So innovation is key. This shows up for me five days a week. And it's not just in this protected block. I will talk in a minute about how my schedule is laid out through the day, where I actually have multiple blocks throughout the week at multiple times of day to just think, where I put the phone aside and I go for a walk, where I uh, sit outside and get some sun as I think about something that's upcoming, or when I'm facing a leadership challenge, instead of reacting immediately to it, I sit and I allow myself to think about it. How would I react from to this challenge or how would I respond to this challenge or or face this challenge as the leader that I'm called to be. So space for innovation. So again, that leaders checklist, you can grab it at luminaryleadershipco.com forward slash checklist. You can snag it there, download it. You can have this tool in front of you and I walk you through each piece and you can make it your own. Now let's talk a little bit about how I map out my week. Every Friday, I take the last two to three hours of the day are not work. They're not me getting stuff done on my checklist. They are designed to close out the week strong as a visionary leader and to tee up the upcoming week. And in the tee up the upcoming week part, I can already see what my schedule for the upcoming week is going to look like. I know what calls are going to be scheduled. I know what projects I'm working on. I know in what order those projects have to be completed and what the priorities are. So when you can start your week. I don't like doing it on Sunday because I, I just don't want to open up my planner on a Sunday. Like that's a family day for me. So if you don't want to do it on Sunday, leverage your work time on Friday to tee you up for Monday so that when you sit down Monday morning, you're not like, gee willikers, I wonder what this week's going to look like. You know what this week looks like. You've known since last week and you are mentally prepared. It is mapped out pen and paper or digitally in your planner, however you do it. And so I'm ready for Monday on Friday. So for me and my schedule, I have that block from six to eight where I'm doing this. And again, it's variable based on the day, based on the baby, based on the night before, whatever it might be. But from six to eight is this protected time. And within that protected time for me is family time too. So the family time doesn't fall into the innovation block, but I include my kids in the optimization. When I'm stretching or when I'm hydrating or when I'm doing the lymphatic drainage or I'm going out on the trampoline, like I'm bringing them with me. They're a part of that with me. When I'm in prayer, they come into the bed and they snuggle with me and we pray together. When I'm visualizing, I'm asking them about their day. So if you have kids, this is absolutely something you can adjust to having them with you. A lot of people kind of roll their eyes at me and they're like, yeah, that's easy for you to say, you know, like, I'm like, I got four little kids. What the hell do you think I do? Of course, I have to adjust according to my children. I don't lock the door and tell them mommy's in you know, protection mode for the next two hours, fend for yourself. My kids are young. How can you bring them into it and then just buy yourself that 10 to 20 minutes for the innovation part on your own? So this is how I I map out my week. I like to, I'm a compartmentalized thinker and this is where I'm most effective and most productive. And I have shifted things over the years. My schedule used to be my calendar, like my ability for someone to schedule a call in my calendar was just open, like weekdays from whatever, nine to four. And so I didn't know 
when calls would be sprinkled throughout my day. So two things that I've implemented that have been, holy smokes, so powerful. I have no meeting slash no call days of the week where I do not have the ability to for anyone to schedule a call with me on those days. So I know those days are blocked for the creative, visionary leadership work that I need to do. And I can map it out accordingly. And there'll be nothing interrupting that day, minus my many children. And I have no meeting blocks. I do not have meetings before, preferably 1 p.m. There's one day a week where it falls, you know, it's not before noon. And by doing that, I know that my most creative, energized point of the day is not wasted on a meeting where I don't have to be creative and energized. I just have to focus on the things that have to be checked off on that meeting. And the most creative, energized time of my day is dedicated to things that will actually move the needle forward in my business. Hear that loud and clear. Are you hemorrhaging the most beautiful, precious, incredible energy zone of your day, which might be different for you than it is for me. Most people, it's the morning. Some people, they're night owls. Some people, it's this block in the afternoon. I can't relate to that. I crash in the afternoons most days. So when my energy is at its best, are you taking the activities, not the checklist stuff, not the to-do stuff, not the stuff you could do while you were also like watching Netflix or talking to the kids, the stuff that actually would drive the business forward, would change everything that would take you into a new hemisphere, stratosphere, hemisphere, stratosphere, take you into new heights of possibility. Is that being placed in your highest energy zone? The reason I implemented no meeting mornings was because I found I was on meetings for a two-hour block of the period of the day where I'm the most optimized. I just did all this work in the morning to get my body right, my mind right. And then I'm going to sit on a Zoom to talk about like a marketing strategy. Heck no, that gets pushed off to the afternoon. So Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for me, generally speaking, depending on the season, it changes during launch or different programs that we're running or when we're hosting events, obviously. But for the most part, my regular schedule, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, are content creation focus. There are no calls. There are no meetings. I always have the afternoons as if there is a fire to be put out, which again, I'm not doing brain surgery. So usually there's nothing that's super urgent. I have, you know, the ability to find, carve out time to speak to my team as necessary. I always want to be available to them. But for the most part, we try and condense that to Tuesdays and Thursdays. So Tuesdays and Thursdays are my team slash meeting slash call days slash rough pushing days. What do I mean by that? I try my best to use Mondays and Fridays. I'm sorry, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from uh, 9 a.m. Because so from 6 a.m. I do that block where my family is kind of included in it. And then I have the innovation time on my own. Eight to nine is kids. I'm just totally with the kids. Uh, The nine to about 1 p.m. is my content creation time. That's where I'm recording. That's where I'm writing. That's where I am doing the big, big projects and moving them forward. These are the things that are going to make us more profitable. These are the things that are going to help us scale. These are the things that only I am doing and can and should be doing. And then anything that's to-do list like, like when I go into my Asana and my teams, you know, put stuff on my list that they need for me, or if I have little tasks that I have to do. That doesn't fall in that 9 to 1 p.m. period, okay? If I need it, I try my best to move that to Tuesday and Thursday in a very condensed period of time where I set a timer and that's rock pushing. That's getting those rocks pushed forward so that my team can continue to go and to continue to grow. If I have project, if we're in a busy project season, and they can't wait till a Tuesday or Thursday. They need something from me on a Monday or a Wednesday. That's okay too. I intentionally have a block of time. So instead, my, my creation time gets condensed. It's nine to noon and noon to one is rock pushing. So sometimes there are weeks for like three, four days have those rock pushing things because guess what? I'm not a Fortune 100 company. I have tasks. I wear a lot of hats. But I want a nice big chunk of time where I'm uninterrupted and I can be creative And I can knock out, you know, 10 videos for a course we're creating that's going to help us be more profitable. 
or I can map out the speech that I'm going to give that's going to help us with visibility, or I can bang out four podcast outlines so that I'm a month ahead on content. What happens is a lot of people don't use block scheduling the way it's intended to be used. And we deplete our brains when we have to ping pong back and forth between activities and rock pushing and and creation or creative mode and analytical mode or looking at data and then going into tasks and then trying to record a podcast. And my director of operations and I talk about it all the time where she'll come to me and she'll say, hey, do you need me to have my creative hat on or do you need me to have my analytical hat on? Because right now I'm kind of in analytical mode and it's going to take me a little bit to shift into creative mode. And that's so true. You cannot successfully ping pong back and forth between the two without wasting time. That's why I like to have blocks of time that are dedicated to like tasks or like projects so that I don't have that decision fee to fatigue and I don't have that bouncing back and forth. I can stay lasered in on whatever it is I'm supposed to be focused on. I'm leveraging those energy zones. And lately, getting up with babies, speaking of energy zones, and I'm navigating continued healing, I tend to start to peter out around 1 p.m. From a creative perspective, I'm not like go take a nap, but I'm not feeling the most mentally energized. So we've stopped dedicating time to that creative stuff for me. Okay. And that's usually where Michael and I switch out because we tag team. We don't have childcare intentionally. We homeschool our kids. So we're all home together in that morning block. That's Michael's time with the kids. Then around that 1 p.m. hour, I switch in and now I'm in kid mode. And I'm not trying to juggle kid and work at the same time unless we strategically plan something where we're going to be sitting down doing that kind of thing. And it allows me to get the most out of those blocks of time. I'm working literally half the amount of hours that I was working and I'm putting out 10 times the amount of content and uh, profitable uh, works and offers in our business. And I'm taking less calls and we are so much more streamlined. So Mondays, again, Mondays for me, there's that six to eight block where that more protected time, get my mind right, the leader's checklist kind of mindset. And then I'm going into from nine to noon or nine to one, I'm writing podcasts, courses, anything like that. It's very content driven. On Tuesdays, again, I have that six to eight block. And then from nine to 11 is content creation, writing, filming. So still on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm still leveraging that creative zone for myself. Then from 11 to one is when I have meetings and calls. And then Wednesdays is filming. All day. I just come down here to the barn studio. Everything's all set up. I have the lights. Can't see them, but I have one back here. I have one over there. I have one right over in front of me. My microphone's right here. My camera's obviously right there. And I have my notes down in front of me. And this is filming day. Wednesday's filming. My team knows that. I'm not typically meeting with team. And if we do need to connect, it's through Voxer. So that way it's quick one-offs. It's not like, hey, we have a Zoom disrupting the middle of filming day. Thursday is 9 to 11 is not content creation. I'm leveraging that energy zone for relationship building. So what do I mean by relationship building? One of the most strategic things you can do as a leader, and this is a whole other conversation, is to continue to nurture the relationships that you have. So I'm writing letters to people, thanking them for their time or um, building connections with people. I'm connecting other people that I think those relationships would serve them. I'm just kind of selflessly thinking about like, hey, if I connected these two people, it would be super mutually beneficial relationship. I'm going to put them together. So I'm really nurturing that relationship building and that connection time. And again, 11 to 1 is calls. So whether it's with clients or my mastermind or my team. And then Friday is filming in the morning and visionary work in the afternoon. What do I mean by visionary work? I'm literally looking at our vision. I am recalibrating our goals. I am getting inspired. I'm taking time to think and imagine some new projects we might be working on. And then in that time period, I am prepping for the upcoming week. I know exactly what I'm walking into the next week, barring any curveballs. I know what Monday morning is going to look like so that I'm not sitting down and wasting any time. Because like I said, I work half the amount of time and I get double the amount done or more than double the amount done it's because I'm really intentional and focused. I'm never just like, I wonder what I'm going to work out on today in this next hour. I know exactly what I'm working on in those blocks of time. And then during that one to three or one to four 
period. That's where I'm tagged in with the kids specifically and Michael's working. And then from four on, it's just family time. That's where we're together. We're playing outside, we're barbecuing, we're prepping food together, uh, we're reading books, we're doing all the things. And we have so much time to be present and focused because of how efficient we are with our time. And also during these times are when I'm leveraging tools like chat GPT. Now I did an entire episode on this. Let me just cross check and let you know exactly when that episode or what episode that was. I'll link it. Uh, it was episode 174. It's how I use chat GPT to save 20 plus hours a week. This is part of the reason I am able to be so efficient is because in some of that like creation mode time, also where I'm starting to do research and I'm leveraging chat, like there used to have to be an additional three to four hours a day of work, just researching and prepping and pulling information. And now I leverage this as a tool. It's like having another employee in the business. So if you really want to figure out how to leverage this for free, go to episode 140, uh, 174. I'm going to link it below. You can snag it, listen to it. It's super powerful. I have a free download. It's an ebook just walking you through how I use it and the prompts I use. So you can snag that and implement it as well. But that's the schedule. It's not rocket science. It's forever changing. People have been kind of curious what it looks like. Oh, another thing we do is Wednesday nights are our moving the needle night. So since we have a baby, we're not really getting out for date night, but we intentionally build in time. We try not to work at night or on the weekends, but we build in time Wednesday night where it is a block of time from eight to 10. After the kids go down, we, you know, get appetizers or something that just kind of makes this more pleasant. We'll turn on music we like and we sit together in the living room and we pick up ahead of time, a project that we're working on, that we're just in the same room, pushing that project forward just for two hours. It's just a way to like get us a little bit of a ahead and it's planned and it's enjoyable and we're together. We're not off one person in one office, one in another. And we have that moving the needle time on Wednesday nights. So that's something you could try too, is a lot of people will just let work bleed into their evening and it's not intentional. Again, they're just reacting to the pressure of all the things they have to accomplish. Instead of saying, hey, it's move the needle night. Like, what do you want to have for our snacks? What do you want to have for a drink? What music do you want to listen to? Let's sit and we set a timer. And when that timer goes off, we are done. But we got to move the needle and we are, we're not doing junk little things. We're doing things that are actually progressing us and helping the business grow at scale. Because we're working on limited schedules. And, you know, when you have kids, when you have a lot going on, maybe you're caring for parents, maybe you still have a full-time job, maybe you are homeschooling as well, whatever it might be, you have to be intentional and wise with your time and know exactly how you're going to spend it. And, and to keep coming back to, is this what I'm about to do right now? Is this supporting the mission? Is this supporting the vision? Is this helping us move the needle? Or is this just crap I've been doing for a while that I just keep doing, hoping that it's going to click someday? Be intentional, do the work that's actually going to turn the dial and save that rock pushing garbage for a limited chunk of time because it has to get done but it's not the stuff that's going to drive the business forward. Okay, if this resonated, please share it with a friend, pass it along. Do us a favor, go write us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast. We're so appreciative of them. It helps us to get amazing guests on the show and to bring us the content that you're seeking. And go check out the description below if you're watching this because we have some really powerful resources linked for you that you're going to want to stag. Okay, thanks for tuning in. I hope today's episode gave you what you needed. If it spoke to you, please leave us a review and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next powerful episode. And I know it's so cliche to ask for a review. It always feels weird asking for one, but you guys, that makes a huge impact on the show. We read every one of them and it helps us get incredible guests to serve you. Don't be shy. I love connecting with our listeners. You can follow along on Instagram when I'm on there, at Eliz Hartke. And if there's a topic or a question or a guest you have for us, reach out, share your thoughts. You can connect at marketing at luminaryleadershipco.com. And we do this for you. So the more you tell us, the more we can serve you. Thanks for spending some time with me. I really do appreciate you. Tune in next week to keep building your legacy and becoming the confident visionary leader you are meant to be.